Hello, this is On The Spot STEM, and today we will be tackling 2016 Amy 2 problem number 15. We're given that for i in the range 1 to 215, we let a sub i equal the, reciproc the reciprocal of 2 to the i power, and we let a sub 216 equal 1 over 2 to the 215th power, and we let x1, x2, x3, all the way to x216 be positive real numbers such that all of this is true and we want to find the maximum possible possible value of x sub 2. So first we should try to figure out what this expression is trying to tell us and we look at this and we realize that we take every possible ordered pair i, j that satisfies this inequality by the way i and j have to be integers and we plug it into this expression right here, and then we sum up all those terms. Like for example, we take x1, x2, plus x1, x3, plus x1, x4, plus x1, x5, all the way up to x1, x2, 16. And then we do x2 times x3, plus x2 times x4 plus x2 times x5 all the way up to x2 x216 and you can see where this is going but we want to try to figure out how do we express this huge summation of terms we notice that each term is the product of two separate terms in the x1, x2, all the way up to x216 list. So we should think of the expansion of x1 plus x2 plus x3 all the way up to x216 multiplied by x1 plus x2 plus x3 all the way up to x216. And the reason for this is because that we list all the terms and we can multiply them with any of these terms in the x sequence and plus we know the sum of the terms of the x sequence so this is one and this is one so this product should or this massive summation when you expand it out should come out to one so when we try to expand this out we notice that we get an x1 squared plus an x2 squared plus x3 squared all the way up to x216 squared. This is because we can match an x1 with an x1, x2 with an x2, and so on to x216. But these aren't the only terms that we will get when we expand all this out. We can match x1 with x2, x3, x4, x5, all the way up to x216, which is where this line comes from and we can match x2 with x1, x3, x4, x5 all the way up to x216. So it seems like we're going to get two of each of these terms that we want and that is correct because we can choose one of those two terms here and then choose the other here or the other way around. So the rest of the terms will be 2 times this. And note that that covers all the terms in the expansion of these two sums. And now we have a um, much nicer way to express this and we can solve this algebraically for this. Oops.
So now that we found a nicer way to express this, we should try plugging in our expression instead of this. And then we find this expression. And now we should try to combine the like terms because we notice here that we have an xi squared sum to 216 and this summation on the right hand side also can go from 1 to 216 and has xi squared in it. So let's first combine the non-summation terms because there's a half on this side and 107 over 215 on this side. And because the sum bounds are the same, we can combine the two sums into one. I'll put uh, brackets to make it easier to see. And notice how I pulled the half into the summation and you're allowed to do that because you're allowed to pull in constants into the summation because they'll still be distributed into the sum regardless of whether they're inside the sum or outside the sum. So now we just simplify. Let's first give these terms a common denominator. 214 over 430. And then let's also give a common denominator here. xi squared times 1 minus ai over 2 times 1 minus ai. And then ai times xi squared over 2, 1 minus ai. And I should put... And then we notice that the xi squared times ai, those cancel, so we can write this as 1 over 430 equals summation from, whoops, 1 to 216 from xi squared over 2 times 1 minus ai. And like I mentioned earlier, you can pull constants outside or inside of sum, so we can cancel this constant 2 or 1 half over here to get 215. So now we have 1 over 215 equals summation from i equals 1 to 216 xi squared over 1 minus a squared, 1 minus a1 a sub i squared. So looking at this equation here, we think that we might be stuck because we aren't sure how to utilize this information because we know the, the sum of the xi terms, but we don't know much about xi squared, and we especially when it's over 1 minus a sub i. We do know all the a sub i terms, but it's not very helpful when the denominator keeps changing for every x of i squared term. And again, we don't know much about the x of i squared, even though we do know the sum of the x of i terms when they're not squared. But if we look back at the problem statement, it says the maximum possible value of x2. So maybe we should try putting some bounds on this equation. And looking at it, it doesn't look like we can immediately put bounds. So 
maybe we should try using a famous inequality. So the two most well-known inequalities for AIME are AMGM and Cauchy-Schwarz. And note that AMGM only works when all the terms in the list are positive. And that does help us because the x1, x2, x216 list, they all have to be positive real numbers. So maybe AMGM could work, but we don't have a massive product of all the terms. So AMGM doesn't seem like it's going to help us. But maybe let's try looking at Cauchy-Schwarz where we, ha we could have xi squared over 1 minus ai, which is difficult to work with, but what if we were to tack on a list of 1 minus ai, then we could have, I'm going to use pi squared and qi squared here, just so that we don't confuse the ai lists. What if we were to have pi squared be this and qi squared be this? Then we have to look at the product and take the square root. So if we were to multiply xi squared and 1 minus ai and by 1 minus ai, we'd be left with x sub i because the square goes away and we sum this from i equals 1 to 216 and we know what this is so we see success so we should try taking this one step further and writing everything out. So I've this summation squared is less than or equal to I equals uh, that should be I and then we multiply this by the sum from i's from 1 to 216 of 1 minus a sub i. But we know all the a sub i terms, so we can compute each of these parts out. And we know from here that this is 1 over 215. We know that all the xi terms sum up to 1. But we can easily figure out what this sum is because of the definitions of each of the a sub i terms. So if we were to sum this all, sum up all 216 terms, we'd have a 216 minus the sum of all the a sub i terms. And I'll write this as a sub 215 and the a 216 separately because a216 a sub 216 follows a different rule from all the other a sub i terms. So we notice that all the a sub i terms, so the first 215 terms, form a geometric series. So to evaluate this sum, we use the formula for the sum of a geometric series, where we plug in half to the 215 and now we have to evaluate this. And note that these halves cancel out. Minus 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 215 minus 1 over 2 to the 215. So these nasty 1 over the 2, the two to the 215 terms go away. So we're left with 215. So we write this as 1 is less than or equal to 1 over 215 times 215. But we notice that equality occurs, so we have to look at the equality case of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. 
and equality occurs when the P and Q lists are proportional to each other for every I in the sequence. So now we know that all these terms are proportional and now we can try to figure out what x2 is because we know what a sub 2 is so we can use some algebraic manipulation to figure out what x sub 2 is. So because of the Cauchy-Schwarz equality case, we learned that this is true for every i from 1 to 216, but that 1 minus a sub i in the denominator is kind of nasty, so we should multiply both sides by 1 minus a sub i to get rid of that. And we'd like to take the square root of both sides because again, it's difficult to work with xi squared, but remember that all the x sub i terms are positive real numbers, so we have to take the positive square root for this side of the equation, but for this part, 1 minus a sub i, all the a sub i terms, they're never going to be greater than 1, so this is always going to be positive for all the a sub i terms, so this also takes the positive square root. Also, notice that because c is a constant, it doesn't matter if we square root it or not, so we, we don't have to put a square root over the c, and that just makes it even more nasty. And we don't know much about all the x of i terms individually, but we do know about their sum, so Maybe we should try plugging in i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 3, all the way up to i equals 216 and sum all those equations up. So we have x1 equals c times 1 minus a sub i, or a sub 1. And then we sum this to x sub 216 equals c times 1 minus a sub 216. And we calculated the sum of all these 1 minus a sub i terms here to be 215. So let's reuse that to get 215c equals 1 because all the, the sum of all the x sub i terms is 1. So now we have that c equals 1 over 215, which means x sub 2 equals 1 over 215 times... 1 minus a sub 2, but we know what a sub 2 is by this definition, so now we can figure out the exact value of x sub 2, which is 1 over 215 times 1 minus 1 quarter, and this comes out to 3 over 860, and notice that 860 is not divisible by 3 because 8 plus 6, 14, that's not divisible by 3, so m and n are relatively prime, so our answer is 863. And thank you for watching because this was quite a difficult problem, and please leave a like below and subscribe if you've found this video helpful.